The topic I would like to take up today is minerals and rocks. There is a close relationship between the minerals and rocks. Rocks are made up of minerals which are mostly found in the solid state, whereas the minerals normally contain two or more elements. Now the question is how to define the word mineral. So dear students, I'm going to tell you only the four proper characteristics of the mineral that will help you to define the term mineral. Number one, minerals are naturally occurring homogeneous solid. Number two, minerals are normally inorganic substances. Number three, they are orderly atomic structure. And number four, all the minerals, they have a definite chemical composition and physical properties. Now, what is the main source of the mineral? The hot magma in the interior of earth is normally known as the source of the minerals. And thus, a sequence of the minerals is formed in the rocks as and when the magma cools down. There are other minerals also besides the inorganic substances, which are known as the organic minerals. I would like to give you the examples of those organic minerals like coal which is formed in the solid form, petroleum which is normally found in the liquid form, natural gas which is in a gaseous form. So all these three minerals dear students they are the organic minerals. Now the question is how to identify the minerals? Minerals are basically identified in the form of their hardness, number two, their color, number three, the luster they have. Luster, you must be understanding, that is the shine which we find in the metallic minerals. Then we talk about the cleavage and fracture, that is how the minerals, they break up. And finally, the density of the minerals that is also one of the bases of identifying the minerals. Now we take up certain physical properties of minerals. Number one, the external crystal form. Now what is the external crystal form? That is how apparently the mineral looks like externally. So that external appearance of the mineral is based on the internal arrangement of the molecules of the minerals. So as you must have studied in your mathematics also, the different shapes like cubes, octahedrons, hexagonal and prism. And we have certain minerals which are found in these shapes. And if you just look at the screen, you can see these shapes, how the cubes they look like how the octahedron look like and hexagonal shape and the prism. I can give you the two pictures. You can look at your screens and see the hexagonal shape and the quads, the main mineral which is found in this shape. Hexagonal shape is the one which has got the six sides as compared to the octahedron you can look at the screens and see the diamond, which is octahedron, which has got the eight sides. Now the second property of the mineral is the luster. Luster means the shine, how the mineral shines. The appearance of the mineral surface under the reflected light is known as the luster of the mineral. Normally we use the terms that metallic like luster, that means it's like a metal. We also talk about the adamantine, that is the diamond like. We talk about the vitreous, which has got the luster like the glass like. Or we can talk about the pearl like 
or the silky like. So these are the different shapes which we talk about in the form of the luster of the mineral. The third physical property of the mineral is the color of the mineral because the different minerals are identified on the basis of their specific color they have. Now how the color changes? That is the impurities which are present in the mineral, they provide the shades of the color to the mineral. The fourth property of the mineral is the transparency. How transparent is the mineral? Now the three types of the minerals are recognized on the basis of transparency. So dear children, these are the three types. Number one, transparent. Number two, translucent. Number three, opaque. Now if we look at the definition of these three terminologies, the only difference between the transparent and the translucent is under the transparent, the objects can be seen plainly because the light passes through it. But under the translucent objects, we see the light passes through, but it gets diffused so the objects cannot be seen under the translucent. And the third type is the opaque. Opaque is when the light cannot pass through that is known as opaque. So these three categories, they depict the transparency of the mineral. Now we take up the structure of the minerals. It refers to the particular arrangement of the individual crystals. They're the normal terminologies which we use for the crystals, like sometimes the crystals are finely operated, sometimes they are coarse grained. We also talk about the fibrous structure of the mineral. I'll just show you the picture of how the fibrous mineral look like. Then the divergent structure and lastly the radiant structure of the mineral. Now look at the screen children and I can show you the pictures of how the fibrous mineral look like. Fibrous means it's a thready like structure where the threads from the different portions, they come out of the mineral. That is the fibrous. And if you talk about the radiant, radiant means when from the center, the structure radiates out towards the sides. That is known as the radiant. And if you talk about the divergent, Divergent means from the sides, if it comes to the center, that is known as the divergent. Now the next physical property of the mineral is, how hard is the mineral? So that means the hardness of the mineral is the next property. So what is the hardness? The hardness to which the mineral surface resists being scratched is known as the mineral's hardness. Because if the mineral is soft, it can be easily scratched or in the other words, you can say it can be eroded. But if the mineral is hard, it's difficult to be eroded and weathered too. Now these were the different properties of the minerals. Now we take up the major minerals. If you look up at your screens, you can look at the picture showing the different minerals. And on the side, I have marked what are the different minerals we'll be discussing about today. The one is feldspar, number two, quartz, number three, proxin, number four, amphibole, and number five, mica, because these are the major types of the minerals which we'll be taking up one by one. Now first we take up the feldspar. It is one of the most widely spread minerals which covers half of the earth's crust. The second character of this mineral is its color. The color varies from 
light cream to salmon pink. Silicon and oxygen are the common elements in all the types of the feldspar. Sodium, potassium, calcium, aluminum are formed in the different specific feldspar variety. Now we talk about in what different forms the feldspar is used. It is used basically for the ceramics and glass making. Now, if you look at the screens, you can have a view of the feldspar, how it looks like. These are the two different pictures of the feldspar, one with the white color, another with the pink color. So you can differentiate between the two different colors of the feldspar. Now the second mineral is quartz. It consists of silica and forms one of the most important components of sand and granite. It's very hard mineral and it's virtually insoluble in water. So if it is hard, so that means it will be resistant also, which cannot be eroded or weathered very easily. Now the third property of the quartz is its color. It's either white in color or it is colorless. And the fourth is the usage of the quartz, which is basically used in radars or in radio. Now look at the screen and you can have a view of the quartz. Now next is pyroxene. It consists of calcium, aluminum, magnesium, iron and silica which forms about the 10% of the earth's crust and it is generally green or black in color. And this is the picture of pyroxene. Amphibole, this is another mineral which consists of aluminum, calcium, silica, iron and it forms 7% of the earth's crust. Like pyroxene, this is also green or black in color. And for your information, this is a picture of amphibole. Mica, which is a very common mineral which is found and it forms the 4% of the earth's crust and it is generally found in igneous and metamorphic rock. And here you can view mica. Olvine, this is the element of magnesium, iron and silica and this is basically found in basaltic rock and basalt is a form of a igneous rock. And here are the pictures you can view on your screen how the olivine looks like. Now there is a broad classification of the minerals. Minerals are basically divided into two types. One metallic minerals, another is non-metallic minerals. As the name sounds, metallic, the minerals with the metal content, maybe gold, silver, iron, copper. And non-metallic, which don't have the metallic content. They are further divided into two types, metallic minerals. They are ferrous and non-ferrous. The example for the ferrous, which has got the iron content, the examples are iron and manganese, and the non-ferrous, copper bauxite. And lastly, we take up the non-metallic minerals, which are further divided into two types. One is the organic, that is a fuel mineral, may be the coal, petroleum, natural gas. And lastly, the inorganic, non-metallic minerals, for example, mica, limestone, etc. So children, today we have discussed about the minerals, that is one part of the chapter, minerals and rocks. We have talked about the physical properties. We have seen the different types of the minerals with the pictures. Hope you must have understood and enjoyed the pictures of all the types of the minerals I've shown you. And in my next lecture, I'll be taking up the rocks, which is a part of this chapter only. Mm -hmm.